Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we will get started. Uh, we have others uh, still logging on, but uh, we are recording the session, so we'll get started because we have a very busy agenda this afternoon. Thank you for joining us uh, at the AAA online briefing series. Uh, today's topic is uh, Thailand, the next growth market for Australian technology companies. Um, I'd like to uh, begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of uh, all the lands we meet on today. Uh, for me, that's the uh, Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation in, uh, in Melbourne. Uh, and uh, also pay my respects to uh, elders past, present and emerging around the country uh, throughout Australia and recognise their continued connection to land, waters and culture. And we pay our respects um, also to any um, who are on the call today as well. Uh, today's session is a uh, full uh, session, as, as I say, and uh, we have uh, a, a, a brilliant array of speakers as well. We'd like to welcome you to this uh, Global Tech webinar, which is brought to you by Austrade. Uh, to join the conversation, we encourage you to either use the QR code or use uh, uh, or uh, go on your browser to slido.com and enter the code hashtag global tech so that you can participate as well. The other point I'll make in terms of improving your uh, experience is that as you navigate around the screen, you'll see at the top right hand corner, there's a layout, uh, a layout button, which will allow you to uh, have uh, the, uh, uh, the speaker on the screen, wherever it uh, works best for you. And also if you hover around between one panel and the other, you'll be able to increase or decrease the size of the presentation slides and see the speakers. Uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, we hope you enjoy the, uh, the session. Also, please, uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask the speakers or the panelists, the best place to do that is in the Q&A panel. Uh, which you'll, you'll see all those options at the bottom of your screen uh, or any comments uh, uh, that we, we, we'd like to uh, get from you. Also, you can do that in the chat area, but certainly your questions in the Q&A and then the Q&A panel, uh, uh, you will be able to uh, pose those questions as well. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Marnie Stevens from Austrade, who is going to be your facilitator today and, uh, and uh, Enjoy the session and I'll speak to you again at the end of this uh, this webinar. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ron. And good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marnie Stevens and I am with uh, Austrade's sector team for Advanced Tech and Manufacturing. It's my pleasure today to welcome you to today's webinar. Today's webinar is the third in this series uh, that we have the pleasure of producing in partnership with AIIA. The Global Tech Webinar Series is a series of 10 webinars designed to shine a spotlight on opportunities for Australia's tech exporters, specifically into markets across Asia. Through expert presentations, stories of success and panel discussions, the series sheds valuable insights into the world's most exciting and fast, fastest growing cities, such as Vietnam, Singapore, and today, Thailand. So without any further ado, I invite you to enjoy today's session and get involved in the conversation by clicking into that Slido link, as Ron mentioned. With that, I'll hand over now to Michael Hellerman, the Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner in Bangkok. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Marnie, and thank you to everyone who's joining in the audience in Australia and indeed around the world. Uh, my name's Michael Hellerman, and I'm our Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner based here at the Australian Embassy in Bangkok. And we'll be hearing from a very experienced uh, and sophisticated set of speakers over the course of the event today. But I just wanted to provide a very brief introduction to the digital and technology environment here in Thailand uh, from the perspective of a guest in the country. So as with many places, including Australia, we've seen the COVID-19 pandemic impose a range of restrictions uh, on movement at times and on face-to-face -face contact here in Thailand, many of which have recently lifted. And indeed, Thailand has removed its last uh, entry restrictions for vaccinated travellers uh, from the 1st of May. So 
this event is very well timed in terms of the physical reopening uh, of the country without restrictions to travel. But we've seen an incredible amount of innovation within Thailand during the pandemic, just as we've seen in other markets as businesses look to digitise parts of their business, as consumers have looked for non-physical face-to-face ways uh, to interact with sellers. And indeed, as a labour crunch has hit um, Thailand's very sophisticated export driven driven manufacturing economy. So all the same trends uh, that are in play globally and in Australia have been in play in Thailand uh, over the last few years. And as we'll hear shortly, the Thai government has a a very uh, very ambitious and transformative program focused on accelerating digital and technology uplift across the economy. And at a very, very basic level, uh, I guess to give an anecdote from living in Bangkok that captures the old and new and the digitisation of ordinary life here, pretty much any one of Bangkok's famous street food vendors will allow you now to buy your pad CU or your Masaman with a QR code using Thailand's prompt pay uh, digital payment architecture. Um, it's very simple, easy and free to use. So the old and new uh, is changing rapidly in Thailand. And, uh, you know, with that introduction, it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Mr. Chachai Kun Pidilak, who is the Chief of Operations and Senior Executive Vice President at DEPA, which is the Digital Economy Promotion Agency. And DEPA is a really disruptive, innovative agency that Thailand has set up to accelerate this transformation process across the economy. So, Kun Chachai, uh, over to you. Thank you very much, um, Michael. Um, can you allow me to share the slides? Okay. Oh, well, thank you again, Michael. Um, Austria, um, I uh, pay double IA for inviting me here. Um, it's an honor to be here today and to share with you for a few minutes of the key developments in Thailand to show you why they make um, Thailand the next key growing market for digital opportunities. First of all, let me share with you the digital industry value for like for Thailand market in um, in the fa- past few years. Um, at DEPA, we categorize key digital industry and we select and, and separate in them into five sectors, namely um, hardware and smart devices, digital services, software, digital content. And with the last one being the telecommunications, um, it is left out because uh, it is not presented here. It's the order of magnitude larger than the four categories combined. During and before pandemic, um, we see rapid growth of digital services and digital content um, growing at the 44% and 20% respectively while the other two sectors, which employs roughly half a million people in Thailand, saw a slight decrease at 8 and 3%. Um, Thailand digital um, landscape includes its own population of 70 million people, which is roughly um, half of them living in the urban area. Our mobile phone penetration is 140%. And internet penetration is 80%, about the same number of active social uh, media users um, penetration. In terms of infrastructure, Thailand is consistently ranked among the top for connection speed and affordability. Um, We have an extremely um, reliable and fast internet in Thailand and um, people can enjoy it without even um, having the home internet. We are still working on improving the ranking on many indices around the world. We are aware of the fact that um, the minimal improvement doesn't reflect any big scale um, 
impact we are currently working on. However, we strongly believe that the ranking will reflect accordingly and positively after a few key projects come to fruition. This is a map of our work landscape in order to contribute to digital Thailand initiative that government is setting up. DIPA is taking part in building up digital skill for manpower. We are also working on reinforcing and promoting digital innovators and innovations. We are helping transforming existing small and medium enterprises, key industries and key communities. We are also building and enabling digital ecosystem throughout smart cities uh, initiative. To date, we have invested in more than 120 startups for of various maturity stages. We brought them to support several government service um, digitization. Um, we have brought them to many of the um, events both in Thailand domestically and abroad um, to promote um, um, the market enhancement for, for these startups. There are a few of the, the startup in this portfolio that take part in supporting smart city initiatives mentioned earlier. In order to speed up the digital adoption and creation, the government has designated special economic zone called EEC or Eastern Economic Corridor. It overlays itself on top of the highly industrialized region that helps contribute to the Thailand GDP and export for more than 30 years. DIPA is also have the buildings um, and we have the project called Digital Valley next to the high speed expressway that cuts through EEC region. It is located right next to the submarine um, cable landing station that directly and digitally connect Thailand to the rest of the world. We can say that it is located in the middle of Thailand physical and digital logistic hub. When complete, our EEC campus will comprise of five buildings that as shown in the picture, three of which is completed now and oversubscribed. So the other two buildings will be completed um, next year. Since the Digital Valley is located in the EEZ zone, the tenants can enjoy benefits from Thai government um, incentives, as well as DIPA promotion packages. The companies from various sizes and backgrounds will make this campus a center for digital development. We believe that the digital ecosystem we are building will be the bedrock for many digital opportunities for the years to come. And um, for the interest of time, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, um, please direct them at the contact information listed here. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Kun Cha Chai, uh, for your presentation, which I think in only five short minutes gives a sense of the level of investment that the Thai government is committing to support this transformation agenda and uh, just an insight into the sophistication of the infrastructure, both digital and physical, uh, that is available for business in this country. So thank you again uh, for joining us today. Uh, and it's now uh, my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Nutanai Anand Taranampon, who is the CEO of Interlink Telecom Public Company Limited. And Mr. Nood and I established his own company, this business, and was a pioneer in advancing telecommunication infrastructure in Thailand for many years. And he, in fact, became the youngest CEO to take a company public in Thailand at only 29 years of age. So we're very grateful for his time today. Over to you, Kun Nood and I. Thank you very much. So it's a pleasure for us to, to be able to share you uh, our experience about the infrastructure and uh, the digital economy that we have in, in here in Thailand. So let me share my slide. Yeah, so actually it's the Link Telecom is the, the, the company that doing on the infrastructure and connectivity part. 
So we we uh, we get the promotion from the government of Thailand to do the digital economy. So we we actually believe that in order to have the digital economy, we supposed to have the digital infrastructure and digital applications. So that's how we we focus and uh, trying to manage the growth of, of our company together with the the growth of the the the, the country. So basically what we do in Thailand is we provide the connectivity part and we provide uh, all the basic infrastructure to connect from one place to the other just to make sure that every people in Thailand have a uh, ability to connect to the world and also the world can connect to Thai people. We also extend uh, we also extended our service to the rural area because we believe that infrastructure, digital infrastructure is actually for everyone in, in the country no matter where you are. So we work partner closely with uh, NDTC in order to develop uh, the infrastructure, internet infrastructure to the area that unserved. And right now uh, we glad to say that about 95% of the people in Thailand, they have chance to connect to the internet already. And what, what will happen after they have the connect connectivity uh, to the internet and they can access to the world, we can on top or the other service, for example, digital uh, hospital, digital health, digital education, and all other digital in the future. That's that's what's going to happen in the future. Uh, we also develop the 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 new coming technology together with the government. Uh, we see that drone and anti drone will become one of the newest curve for the country. Uh, imagine about the area that we need to protect and we not allow the the drone to go inside the area, for example, the airport. That will uh, be more and more business for the drone and anti-drone business in, in Thailand right now. As I mentioned before, that we help the country to develop the infrastructure. So in the future, we can see a lot of things can do on tele. So it means that we can connect to the far area rather than we have to commute ourselves to, to certain area. For example, the people who want to see the doctor, they can just telehealth. Uh, to consult the doctor before they get into the hospital in order to consult or to to develop uh, what is the plan for development or what is the plan for for medication and all those stuff. We see a lot of people using a lot of social data for now. Everything they post is online. They post it uh, somewhere else, either on uh, all the platform. So uh, government also and also the company is also focused on how to bring all those data to analyze and make a move, a right move for the business. For example, where to do marketing, where to do promotion and all those stuff. This is also the, the, the impact of the digital economy as well. We also see the importance of the security in terms of cyber security, as well as the camera as a security, as a service. So if you come into Thailand and you, you, uh, you get uh, uh, car stolen, the police will know exactly where the car is moving to the other area and that will help the, the, the people in Thailand have more safe and we we be able to uh, uh, handle the situation faster and faster. So that, that's what is Thailand is driving into on the new s side. We see uh, a lot of spending happening in Thailand, which is a good thing because the infrastructure, the application that I mentioned before is stimulate the spending for the IT in Thailand right now. We see a uh, forecast that the IT spending will be pretty much about 871 uh, 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 billion in terms of Thai bar in order to spend on the data center system uh, in terms of the software enterprise uh, device, IT service and communication service. All those stuff is also the area that we see a lot of growth uh, coming into. Uh, I just want to specific talk about the data, data center business as well. As you guys know that right now, cloud business, data center business is one of the key area that uh, the people is uh, engaging into. And we successfully have the JV with one of the Australian company called uh, Global Data Center Group from Australia in order to develop one of the, the biggest uh, data center in Thailand. And we see a lot of growth for the data center business, in especially in Asia Pacific uh, region. And as you might know the news that Singapore is limit the capacity for the data center. So there will be a lot of the demand coming from Singapore to Thailand in terms of the data center business. So we, we are focusing on the data center because we believe that in the future and upcoming, the cloud business is something that people will use 
more and more cloud in order to put all the data, all the picture and all those stuff online and put it on cloud. And when you put it on cloud, you cannot take it down uh, from, from the cloud because it's, uh, you have to prepare the equipment and all, all, all the equipment and the data center, which is not, not uh, efficiency enough. So pe when people move to cloud, there will be a lot of cloud business going on in the future, which data center will be a key. We are expecting to see in the next five years from now, the cloud and the data center in Asia Pacific, especially in Bangkok and Manila country, uh, uh, Bangkok and Manila will grow pretty much about 55% to shift from the, the, the main, the, the, the normal, normal growth into the, the future, which compared to Tokyo, compared to Singapore, compared to Australia, for example, that will be the area that uh, we will see a lot of growth into. So uh, I just want to share that right now we see a lot of digital transformation happening in Thailand at this moment. So in the future, we will see uh, a lot of investment in terms of the infrastructure. We will see a lot of investment in terms of the software development in, in the country. We will see a lot of development uh, investment in terms of the data center and cloud business. So that combined will be a digital infrastructure combined with digital application. It will happen to, to have the digital commerce with uh, a lot of people will come into uh, using more and more digital in the future. So that will become, uh, will make Thailand as a country to become more attractive in terms of the digital investment in, in, in the future. Uh, having said uh, having said that we have all the technology ourselves or we have the team ourselves to develop the technology but the good part is if we can partnering with the the, the potential uh, company that success who elsewhere that will help thailand to springboard and grow faster and faster uh, as we did it in our company rather than we do it 100 percent by ourselves we decide to go on the jv we decide to set up or to learn from the best in order to uh, have the successful solution and then we help them to marketing localized in Thailand. So that's what I'm going to share about the, the, the Thailand digital market. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kun Nunai, uh, for your presentation. Um, fascinating insights, particularly just on the growth of that data center market here and how it compares to other markets in our region. And uh, our final presenter before our panel session is Mr. Paskorn Kochapunsunton, who is the Vice President Engineering at N4 Secure Public Company Limited, which is the leading cybersecurity distributor here in Thailand. And uh, Kun Paskorn has uh, years of experience in the sector, but interestingly has been the principal consultant on more than 20 large scale cybersecurity projects in both government and the private sector. So really covering the sector in tremendous depth here in Thailand. So over to you, Kumpas Kon. Yeah, uh, thank you, Michael. Okay. All right, so uh, for, for the first thing in the Thailand economy, or I want to show you about the term of the IP spending. Uh, forecasting. So here is uh, information from the Gartner. So we see that overall IT investment in 2021 was at uh, 819 billion baht, which is a close around 7. Point uh, 7.4% year on year from 2020, with the highest jump in the DY category at 21.7%, and in enterprise software at 6.8%. Uh, that the research forecast the overall IT spending in 2022 to be at around 8,071 billion baht, a slow steady increase of the 6.4% from 2021, with the high at close in enterprise software of around 14.8%. Uh, 
the next we want to show you about the term of the uh, IT security spending. In terms of the security spending, that is growth in 2021 at 7.7% .7 increase from 2020, or at around 13 billion baht. Some of the most active category, as highlighted in the list box, from right to left. Per security service at around 5 million baht. Network security equipment at around 2 billion baht. And IT infrastructure protection at 1 billion baht. For year 2022, the estimate closed in around 8 to 9% from 2021. The driving factor in 2022 will be the enforcement of the Personal Data Protection Act and those novel notorious security attack in the news. Additionally, the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic still like uh, and the product look to keep an eye on shell B security service, network security equipment, and cloud security. More recently, sorry, more recently the promulgation of the personal Personal Data Protection Act will also drive the sale clause of data security product also. So we want to share you about term of the market analysis of the customer segment. According to the information from the Department of Business Development of the Ministry of Commerce, there are a collect 28k registered company which could be put into four categories. The first SME around 1 million baht. The middle with the registered capital less than 5 million baht. Uh, enterprise with registered capital less than 100 million baht. And the last enterprise, last one, more than more than 100 million baht. Our focus group at the enterprise and last enterprise totaling around 91k company. To dig deeper, we target last enterprise BFSI utility public sector and telecom, your target group may differ. So the next we want to talk about for the product and technology for the security sector. For the past year, the COVID-19 situation and the resulting work from home trend has sparked up to use of the technology more, such as SASE, remote workforce, or the remote meeting technology. Adding to that, the announcements of the Personal Data Protection Act and the Cybersecurity Act Case agency and company to invest more IT security and compliance. So there are more opportunity in the the kind of emerging technology roadmap for last enterprise 2021 and 2023. We also hit you the direction. So that we want to show you about that term of the. Uh, Gardner Emerging 
Emerging Technology Lost Map for Large Enterprise 2021 to 2023. The chart shows variant technology trend and the variant state. That three important ones are those expect to be deployed complete in 2021, such as uh, cloud access security broker, such as uh, SOAR security orchestration automate and respond. So to, uh, number two for the expected to be deployed complete in 2022, such as the hardware-based security and the SAT AIM. For the third, uh, stood that in the, still in the pilot phase, such as a zero task network access and uh, MTD, mobile threat defense. We predict that Thai company will follow suit and adopt those within one, two, three years. So also for the Garner uh, top safety trend uh, for 2022, we should find technology trend that will soon play important role in Thai market, data traffic and uh, machine learning, cyber security mesh, privacy enhancing computation or the cloud native platform, and last one, composable application. I think that that the five technology will coming in the Thailand soon. Thank you. See you in the panel discussion. Thank you uh, very much, Kumpas Korn, uh, for that presentation. And uh, as I think, as it's very clear that we're seeing, you know, strong global trends uh, in the importance of uh, online security and digital security being reflected in the Thai market, as we'd see in Australia. Um, so thank you to our presenters who are also joining us on our panel, to which I'd like to welcome uh, two new panellists who you can see on the screen there. Uh, Roy Hui, the CEO of Pella Technology, and Mike Stevens, Director International Business Asia at Senatus Corporate Limited, both of whom bring really interesting experience uh, of operating in the Thai market. So I might begin with you, Roy, and ask you to tell us a little bit about your company and your business journey in Thailand. Sure, thank you. Um, firstly, um, I would like to thank Austrad for the opportunity to participate in this panel session. Um, so Palo Technology was started in 2017 and we provide enterprise blockchain solutions. So um, the infrastructure blockchain layer, the applications on top, and all of the solutions uh, as a managed service. Um, so with our solutions, we create digital banking systems, uh, fractional asset ownership systems. So take like a large real estate um, portfolio and divide it into many smaller portions, uh, as well as uh, utilizing blockchain for um, trading various assets. So in uh, 2018, um, working with the Victorian government and Austrade, we participated in the trade mission um, and Austrade has uh, introduced us to a variety of um, very high profile, high caliber uh, businesses in Thailand, uh, including Boilon Securities, uh, Honda and uh, various other uh, larger companies. And um, throughout that journey, we've made a lot of friends. I think. Uh, probably the most important element in uh, all of our experiences in this market, uh, making new friends, uh, where we've um, built up a lot of credibility um, and respect, mutual respect. And over the years, um, all of those relationships uh, essentially um, fruitioned into uh, smaller projects, uh, pilots, and now into um, substantially larger opportunities. 
So currently we're working with NQDC, TMB Group, um, and a, a few other portfolio companies within the CP Group on introducing uh, blockchain solutions uh, across a variety of uh, different applications. And uh, it's really exciting to uh, be a part of this um, change in this particular market. Thanks, Roy, and uh, very much appreciate the shout out. And, you know, from an Australian government perspective, it's uh, so exciting to have this kind of Australian capability on the world stage uh, here in Thailand. And Mike, I might ask you the same question, if you could introduce Senators and, and tell us a bit about uh, your story in Thailand. My pleasure, Michael, and thank you again for helping me uh, participate uh, with the broader audience on, on this call. I'm very excited about uh, Thailand. It's been a great market for us. Sanitas is a Victorian-based uh, high-assurance encryption company building military-grade encryption for protecting data uh, across networks and also data at rest. Our journey in Thailand started in uh, 2007. Uh, we've recruited uh, and onboarded three very good partners, and they're still with us. Uh, still with us today. I'm actually in Thailand this week, and I had my Singapore channel manager in here as well. So we're spending a week with our partners, and as as Roy indicated, relationships really do matter in, in Thailand, and uh, investment in time uh, pays off over the uh, over the journey. Uh, likewise, investment in time with uh, with Austrade. I think we've been working together with the team there for ten years plus. Uh, great access, very talented, talented team. So we always leverage Brand Australia in Thailand. It's a well-respected brand. Um, Thailand is also very recognition uh, of uh, standards, as uh, uh, Poscom indicated with the PDPA Act. We're operating in the military and bank space, where standards like FIPS and NATO common criteria are used to uh, certify devices for encrypting data on the networks. They're quite inexpensive to get those standards, but the Thai government, the Thai military looks for those standards. That's very important coming into the into the Thai market is recognise the standards that will apply to your solution in particular uh, particular areas. So I think from our perspective, it's it's been a great journey. We've won a lot of uh, clients with the military, all branches of the military, um, most of the banks, and they're very large and sophisticated banks. So for any fintech companies. And underestimate the size of the banks there and the sophistication uh, of the market, which makes it exciting if you've got the uh, thought leadership, thought leadership product. So glad to participate on this uh, panel, Michael. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. And and just picking up on a couple of questions in Slido. One of the questions addresses this idea of where can you go to support, to get support if you're looking to enter the market. What agencies can you talk to? And I think you're seeing on this call. Obviously, our team at Austrade very happy to work with you uh, at any stage of your market entry. And, and importantly, you've heard from DEPA on the Thai side as well about some of the incentives that are available for technology businesses uh, here in Thailand from the Thai government. So my next question goes to Kunudunai. And from a Thai perspective, as an established Thai business, what advice do you have for an international business? in this case, an Australian business looking to do business here in Thailand and how they might think about approaching the market or a local partner? Yeah, I think in, in the space that I'm here is the, the telecommunication business. In order to operate telecommunication business in Thailand, it's not allowed the foreigner uh, to own the license. So basically, JV is, of course, the, the way to go. I give you an example that mobile operator like AIS uh, they actually think they want to come in, but they cannot come in as a majority. So they have to do the structure and partnering with Thai in order to own the license. We also did the same uh, for, for our own business. So we hold the license and we partnering with the technology provider, for example, Cisco, uh, in order to invest in our uh, in, in Thailand and then we service to the customer. So basically, go to market strategy, we believe in the partnering model. Uh, we can be a local arm and uh, international partner uh, uh, from Australia, from wherever they can be a technology provider or expert matter in order to partner together. Our recent deal, we just have partnering with uh, uh, one of the AFX uh, listed company uh, named Global Data Center Group. 
So they, they actually successful in terms of the data center in Australia, but they want to come in to Thailand. So we, we help them to own the land, we help them to do all the construction, and we own some share in the company, the new company that we set up together. So they help us in order to have the expertise in terms of operate many data centers in the world. And they help us to bring in a, a major customer, like major car operator coming to Thailand. So a combination of partnership will help us to be able to successful in terms of the business. And we also help help them for, as an international uh, uh, international business in order to solve or fix the problem that they might not be able to fix, for example, legalize and all those things. So I think it's, it's, it's always a, a good thing to do partner with uh, with the right company. Thank you uh, very much, Kun and I very much support those sentiments. Uh, Kun Paskorn, with with your experience and in and in your sector, you know what what you've got a lot of experience working with international businesses as a distributor. What what do, what what would you tell an international right. audience looking at the market? All right, thank you for your question. So, based on my experience, so we must recommend decision for your uh, find that the right partner because. You can imagine for the partner, uh, for the for the vendor have the two hand. When you go to that the Thai market, you have one to uh, many hand to go to the segment of the customer. So many segment of the customer, many customer. But example for the financial segment, so many kind of the customer for the financial segment. If you have to arm, you cannot cover that in the area. You want to many arm to trust with the customer. And when you find that the right partner, you can do development with the end customer in terms of the advanced technology. You can spend the time for the uh, provide uh, advanced technology because in terms of the security technology that is advanced, right? So, uh, Thai partner they know about uh, in customer well, and I think that for the for the barrier important that the language barrier is important also. That is a problem. So uh, I think that customer know about the language, English language, but they don't speak. And you you can expand that the number of the Thai partner in the future when you go to with the Thai. That idea to uh, recommend you find a partner. Thank you very much, Kumpaskorn. And the point on language and culture is an important one, uh, particularly here in Bangkok, but in, in most of Thailand's big regional cities, you have often a very sophisticated, internationally educated English management cohort across both government and business. But of course, it varies by sector and some family businesses uh, you know, may not have had as much experience doing business in English. So as with anywhere, uh, you know, local culture and language is really important, uh, as, as Kun Paskorn said. Um, so I think that's, you know, that's a, a, an obvious but very important um, barrier to consider for, for any new business. And, and indeed, when you think for a Thai business on the way into Australia, these factors exist in our market too. Relationships are important there language and culture matters in Australia too. So these these things are not mysterious things that only happen in Thailand. Uh, so Mike, I've got a I've got a question from the virtual Slido floor for you, which is what's your go to market strategy in Southeast Asia? Has your expansion outside of Singapore been proactive or opportunistic? And how'd you go about it if it was proactive? Uh, thanks, Michael. A very, very good question. Uh, I think, uh, look, I've been operating in, in this region for a while and you have to continually uh, refresh. 
your strategy, you go to market strategy. Also, as your products change, sometimes they, they may fit with a different style of partner, particularly with some of our products and moving into virtualization. I think uh, Good Pascal raised the same issues. You need to choose the right partner. And when you choose that partner, you must keep that partner energized. Because in Thailand, there are many great partners, but they also carry many different products. So when the sales and the BDMs wake up in the morning in Bangkok, Maybe they've got 20 products to sell. You want to make sure they're thinking about yours. And that means education, roadmaps, case studies, easy to put proposals together, show up and, and go to customer calls with them. So you really need to keep close to your partners. And, and uh, they, the aim there is to work on strategies to make them successful. And they want to be successful and they want you to help them to be successful. So. Uh, every country is different. Thailand has its nuances. Uh, Indonesia has its nuances, Sri Lanka, etc. But I think it's a case of um, you need to just keep on resetting your strategy and resetting your partners as new technologies and new waves. Uh, we heard about the new technologies that are, that are coming, the new standards. Sometimes partners are not aligned with those new technologies. So again, uh, eyes wide open as you move into these uh, move into these markets. And you have to be flexible and show up. <laughs> that would be my key, uh, key points. Good Indeed. Question. And, and uh, you know, very importantly, it is possible to show up now without quarantine, uh, without even a PCR test on the way in, as with Australia. So the times uh, suit that advice, which I very much support. Um, you know, Roy, you painted a, you know, a very, a very positive picture um, of your market entry over a period of years. But... Uh, we know that it took uh, discipline and patience as developing a new market does. So, you know, what sort of barriers did you experience on the way in and, and how did you overcome them? Uh, certainly, um, we hoped uh, the journey uh, would be a matter of weeks or a matter of months. But in reality, it took um, from 2018 till essentially now for us to um, break have a substantial break in the market. So um, like uh, Kun uh, Pascon suggested before, uh, uh, culture is only one of them. Um, being able to, uh, I guess, understand a little bit of language, uh, even try to attempt uh, some easier, you know, hello or thank you, uh, has uh, always been a little uh, icebreak uh, in, uh, in um, barrier to entry from a cultural perspective. But I think the major one from our perspective, because we're a technology business, is the validation. Um, when you uh, enter into the market, there's always going to be the first customer. And even though you've had success around the world, you know, in Australia, in Singapore, in other similar regions, but who is the first customer here in Thailand? I think that's a very important and difficult nut to crack. Um, in our perspective, uh, we, we um, attempted to try to do smaller deals um, or form friendships or look at uh, different ways to tackle this problem, but getting that very first client over the line um, and validation, uh, building that credibility and validation has probably been the most difficult. Yeah, and I, th I think you raise, you know, a profoundly important point, which is that for many, particularly technology services businesses, while theoretically at the outset you might you might at the outset you might think your world class piece of software is going to travel seamlessly over the ultra fast uh, connection that we heard about in the DEPA presentation, but you know often it takes a lot of that old fashioned BD that that both Roy and Mike have talked about uh, in those presentations. Um, so uh, you know, and I think one of our core functions at Austrade here is to help you navigate. Um, that on the ground uh, piece of work that accompanies your world-class product or service coming into the market. Um, and we're coming towards uh, the end of our session. So Kundur and I, I might ask you one blue sky question, which is from where you sit and looking at big opportunities here in the Thai tech sector, you addressed this a little in your presentation, but what, do you think is the big exciting opportunity here in Thailand uh, as we as we go forward out of the pandemic? 
Yeah, I think the the COVID nineteen actually prevent a lot of uh, the work from home or uh, people adapt themselves to more digitization. So uh, you will see that uh, a lot of uh, the discussion or a lot of uh, event is actually right now online virtually. So I think if we if we can adapt ourselves in order to match to that trend, I think that will be a great opportunity for a lot of news company in order to organize this kind of event and all those things. So they can capture the unserved market and they can successful on that as well. I see a lot of uh, the, the newcomer is focusing on the cloud business. Cloud business actually is seem to be easy, but there, there's a lot of niche in terms of the software. People in here in Thailand, traditionally, they want to own it. They want to own the software. They want to have the team to develop the software themselves. But right now, we are trying to cut costs. We're trying to more efficiency in terms of spending. So we tend to use uh, more more software on cloud, uh, move from traditionally to the cloud uh, software as a service. So we can save in terms of uh, the software development. We don't have to hire the team, which sometimes they don't know how to do things, but they just sit there. Or uh, we don't have to invest for the hardware uh, and all those uh, equipment that to maintain the system, but we can just go to use uh, the, the chair service that's successful elsewhere. So I think we will see a lot of uh, new company uh, doing this kind of the software as a service, uh, hardware as a service, infrastructure as a service is coming on and on. And that will be something that I'm very exciting to see in the future. And I'm sure that Australia have so many company, tech company like that, and that will be very welcome. Uh, I can help to uh, connect the dot to the customer or whatsoever. We will be appreciate to do that. Thank you uh, very much, Kundal Knight. It's a, a very optimistic message uh, about the sector. And as a closing comment, uh, Kumpas Khan, any final comments or observations from you on the nature of the opportunity in Thailand before we wrap up? All right, all right. So uh, I talk about for the find the right partner in the last question. So uh, I need to tell you about how to find the right partner. Example in terms of the uh, me FSI partner, right? So uh, that the, that the enforce my company do about that term of the distribution, right? We lead we the lead of the distributor in Thailand. We provide that the uh, security solution for the all segment of the customer. We have the partner for the banking partner. We have the partner for the telco partner. That way, why? That way, uh, how to find that the partner? That the that the distributor in Thailand we call about the fulfillment distributor and value added distributor. If you want to sell the product or the solution to the consumer, customer you can find for the fulfillment distributor. If you want to sell value added and the app one solution and add one technology, you can find that the value added distributor that the comment. Thank you very much, uh, Kumpas Khan. And I couldn't agree more that getting that distributor right is the key to success. Um, so can I uh, take this opportunity to thank all our panelists for your contributions, both Thai and Australian. Uh, I think it gives you a sense of the richness of the sector um, and what you can achieve uh, as an Australian business looking to enter this market. And as a call to action for Australian companies who are interested in exploring Thailand in more detail, you can see there the TechSource Global Summit 2022 will be held in late August uh, in person. It's a very large, full tech conference, probably the biggest in Southeast Asia. Uh, and with travel having liberalised, we expect to see people from all across the region. So if you need an excuse and you need to get a business case approved for good business development in Thailand, uh, take a look at that opportunity. So uh, we will close shortly and uh, I would like to thank once more all our colleagues and friends uh, for participating 
can I just say uh, to Jenny in the audience, we have your question and Austrade will look forward to getting in touch with you about your specific inquiry for the market. To everyone who has joined, thank you very much uh, for your time. And I'll hand back to Marnie in Australia to wrap us up. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Michael. And I'd like to echo Michael's words and thank all of our speakers today. It's been a fantastic session uh, learning about the new opportunities in Thailand's very vibrant tech sector and the importance of partnerships and building partnerships in country. Uh, we hope our audience has, ha has learned some great insights from today's session and from our very esteemed speakers, so thank you again. Uh, I'd like to also thank you, Michael, for facilitating today's session and as well as our partners at AIIA for your support and the team behind the scenes uh, to make this webinar possible. As I mentioned at the top, this is a series of webinars, so we look forward to uh, you joining us for our next session, which will feature South Korea. Ranked first in the Bloomberg Index of Most Innovative Nations multiple times, South Korea continues to search ahead in many tech sectors. <clears throat> the country invests heavily in new technologies such as AI, 5G and cybersecurity. So to hear more about South Korea, we look forward to you joining us on the 5th of July. With that, I'll hand back to Ron to close today's webinar. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Marty, and uh, thanks, Michael, and all the panelists as well. What uh, a, a really interesting group of uh, of people with the, some uh, great insights into the opportunities in Thailand. Obviously, as Marty says, uh, you can go to our website and uh, and register for that event on um, on July the fifth, and also the recording from today's session will be available. We'll send the link out to everyone. Uh, who uh, attended today and, and, and registered for the event and you you are welcome to forward that link on to colleagues as well. So with that uh, and uh, uh, we are on time. So thank you for everyone. It was a hell of an effort, uh, but we look forward to seeing you at the next session and uh, to the people at Austrade and um, uh, our partners, we, we really appreciate you organizing this series on behalf of the AAA. Thank you everyone. Stay safe, stay well. Thank you. Thank you.